<laughs> Why you must travel for your destiny? Ironically, that is the topic. <laughs> Why you to work fully? Why is this mic behaving like this? Why you must work painfully, painfully, painfully for your destiny, to realize your destiny? Why you must travel for your destiny? Let me start by saying that your destiny is not cheap. Your destiny will cost you. Your destiny is not cheap. You can reduce it. Kidog. Your destiny is not cheap. Your destiny will cost you everything. Your destiny will cost you everything. Everything. That is why you cannot be lazy with your destiny. Let me also say that nobody else is working for your destiny. Nobody else is working for your destiny. So if you are not working for your destiny, chances are that you are going to miss it. If you are not working for, if you are not intentionally working for your destiny, chances are that you will miss it. Hallelujah. Somebody say I'm ready for my destiny. Yes. Yes. So, number one, we have to work for our destiny or we must travel for our destinies because, number one, there are forces ready to stop you or to stop your destiny at any cost. That is the first reason. There are forces that are ready to stop your destiny at any cost cost. Number two. You have to travel for your destiny because you only get what you are hungry for. You only get what you are hungry for. You only get what you are hungry for. God is ready and willing to bless you, but you will never get what you are not hungry for. If you're not if you're not hungry for greatness, forget about greatness. Greatness will never come to you. Because destiny is not something that will jump on you. Destiny is something that you go for. Destiny is something that you pursue. Destiny is something that you work towards getting there. So you have to work. You have to work diligently. According to Colossians chapter 3 verse 23, the Bible says that work heartily 
Put your heart there. Involve your heart. Involve your heart. Involve your heart. Involve your heart. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 11. The Bible says that whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. Your destiny is not cheap. Your destiny will cost you everything. So you must be ready to work with all your heart. You must be hungry. You must be hungry. You must be hungry. Proverbs 16.26 says, The person who labors, labors for himself because his hungry mouth drives him on. There is a drive that pushes a hungry man to keep on working. There is a drive. There is something inside a hungry person that makes him continue to work even when they are tired. Even when things are not working, there is something in a hungry person that makes him to continue working. To continue laboring. If you don't have something in you that drives you to work, then you are not hungry. You're not hungry. If there is nothing, if you have nothing that pushes you into prayer, then you're not hungry. If there is nothing that pushes you to God, then you're not hungry for heaven. You're not hungry for God. <laughs> something to note about hunger. Something to note about hunger. Number one, hunger gives you direction. Hunger gives you direction. <laughs> you are where you are because of the level of your hunger. You are where you are because of your passion. Passion determines where we find you. Anybody can go to the U.S., but you are not in the U.S. because of your hunger. Your hunger has not taken you to the U.S. Your hunger has taken you to Nairobi. Your hunger has kept you. The level of your hunger has kept you where you are. Anybody can go to greatness. It is your hunger that determines your passion. It is your hunger that determines your direct, the direction you take in life. Hunger, hunger. You are here today because you are hungry for God. Other people are somewhere else. It is your hunger that determines your passion. It is your hunger that determines your pursuit. Where you are is determined by your passion. Where you are is determined by your passion. So, write this down. You are you are, your passion will always decide your geography. So the location of your life is always determined by your passion. The location of your life is always determined by your passion. You are in Nairobi because of your passion. Some people will go to Eldoret because of their passion. Others will go to uh, to Mali, to, Ma, to, yeah, to Mali because of their passion. Others will go to Seychelles because of their passion. It is your passion that takes you to where you are. Some people are studying to become lawyers. Others are studying to become medical doctors because of their hunger, their passion. Where is your passion? I pray that God will give you passion for greatness. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. That God will give you passion for greatness. Somebody say, I refuse to be a mediocre. Say again, I refuse to be a mediocre. Yes. 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 Your passion will always decide your geography. When your mind is decided on getting something soon, your body will catch up. Soon your body will catch up. When your mind is fixated on achieving something, your mind is what will drive your body there. 
So your location is always determined by your passion. If you have a passion to do something, very soon you will find yourself achieving it. Very soon you will find yourself doing it. If you have a passion for education, very soon you will find yourself in school. Very soon. If you have a passion to become a medical doctor, it doesn't matter how old you are. Very soon you will find yourself in class. Abraham Lincoln never went to school. He educated himself. He became a lawyer. All by himself. He graduated as a private candidate. He educated himself. And finally became a president. A president in the United States of America. Because of his passion. His passion. Somebody say passion. Say hunger. Yes. 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 If you fix your mind into doing something very soon. Your body will catch up with your mind. I pray that God will create so much hunger, a lot of hunger for greatness in your heart. Are you shouting amen? Are you shouting a believing amen? Write this down. People are in the wrong place or places because their minds are not decided. People are in the wrong places of life because their minds are not decided the moment your mind will decide <laughs> the moment your mind will decide very soon you will get there somebody say I'm decided hmm. hallelujah you can add me some law like in the morning it was Powerful. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 18, verse 1. Proverbs 18, verse 1. Glory to God. Yes, like that. Amen. The Bible says, through desire, somebody said desire. That's what I'm calling hunger. Desire for greatness. Desire for great things. What is it that you desire? What is it that you desire? What do you ask your neighbor for me? What do you desire? He says, through desire or through passion, through hunger, a man will separate himself. Your passion de decides or determines your company. Your hunger will decide or determine your, your association. You cannot work with everybody. You cannot be friends to everybody. There are people that will drain your desire. There are people that will drain your passion. There are people that will drain your hunger for God. You cannot walk with them. So he says through desire or through hunger, a man will separate himself. And when he has separated himself, he will seek. He will do what? He will seek. Do you separate yourself to seek God? Are there times when you separate yourself to seek God? Are there times you separate yourself to seek knowledge? Are there times you separate yourself to study? Are there times you separate yourself just to educate yourself? Are there times you separate yourself to meditate? Are there times you separate yourself to think about your future, about your destiny? A man that has a desire will number one, separate himself. Number two, he will seek. 
he will begin to seek after you separate yourself Ecclesiastes 7 verse 14 says in the day of joy rejoice but in the day of adversity think consider so there are times when you sit down and you start looking at your life you start looking at your past and you look at your future you look at your present you determine the next action or the next step Remember this, nobody is working for your destiny. If you are not working for your destiny, nobody else, no one else is working for your destiny. You better wake up and start working for your destiny. You better wake up and start thinking for your destiny. You better wake up and start praying for your destiny. You better wake up and start seeking knowledge so that you can get to your destiny. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Give us chapter, give us Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Second Peter chapter 2, chapter 1 verse 2, chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. Look at what he says. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everything concerning your life, everything that pertains to your destiny is already given to you. But he says, this is how you get it. It is already given, but this is how you receive. There has never been a problem. My bishop says, Bishop Patrick Karaoke, he says, he keeps on saying, there has never been a problem on the side of God. The side of releasing has never been a problem. It is the side of receiving that has always been a problem. So according to this scripture, he says, you will get what God has released for you through what? Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and to virtue. So if you want to see glory in your life, if you want to see virtue in your life, if you want to see everything God has given to you, God has released unto you, then you have to seek knowledge. Then you have to work to get knowledge in order to get everything. So go back to Proverbs, 20, Proverbs 18 verse 1. It says, through desire or through hunger, a man will separate himself and seek and will intermingle. After separating himself and after seeking, that is the time he will interact with all wisdom. So you cannot get wisdom for your destiny without separating yourself and without seeking and all this will happen because of the passion or the level of passion that you have for your destiny. If you don't have passion, if you don't have a desire, if you don't have hunger, you will never separate yourself to seek. And if you don't seek, you will never find. So why must we travel for our destinies? We must travel for our destinies because you only get what you are hungry for. So hunger gives you direction. Number two, hunger creates motivation. Hunger creates motivation. Hunger creates motivation. You will not have a motivation to seek God if you are not hungry. You will not have a motivation to seek uh, knowledge if you, are not, if you are not hungry. If you don't have a desire. <laughs> you cannot wake up early to travel for your destiny if you are not hungry. It's not possible. David was always hungry for more of God. 
and that's why he would wake up early to seek God every day Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2 so you cannot seek God if you are not hungry you cannot seek God if you are not hungry you cannot seek knowledge if you are not hungry if you cannot seek your destiny if you are comfortable if you are comfortable where you are you will never go for your destiny you will never pursue your destiny so pursuit to our destiny is determined by our hunger our our desperation our hunger our desperation somebody say I refuse to remain where I am if you are comfortable with where you are you will never have the strength the ability the motivation to try and change your life you will never have that so David says oh God thou art my God only will I seek thee my soul dusted for thee my flesh longed see my heart my soul is hungry my soul is hungry I told you that when your mind is hungry when your mind is fixated on achieving something soon your body will follow look at what David says my soul that is the mind my soul that's dead for thee my soul is hungry and because my soul is hungry my body now longeth for thee my body also has become hungry the reason why you don't pray it is because even in your mind you are not ready for God in your mind you are comfortable where you are in your mind you are okay with the status quo the moment your mind will refuse the moment your mind will be uncomfortable where you are with the status quo that is the moment your body will begin to wake up and work the reason you feel lazy to pray it is because your mind is okay as a man thinking so is he <coughs> excuse me if you think you are okay then you will be okay even your body will be okay. Your body will feel lazy. When we tell you to wake up, you will feel lazy. When we tell you to fast, you will feel lazy. You will not have any desire, any motivation to go for prayer, to go for fasting, to read. You will not have any motivation. If you are okay with the 500 you get every day, then your body will never wake up to go to school. You will never wake up to start another business. Because you're okay with the 500 that you have. Somebody say, I refuse to be okay with mediocrity. Say, I refuse to be okay with an average life. Glory to God. Will you become great? How many of you are decided to become great? May God give you that hunger that is needed. The passion that is needed. The desperation that is needed. May God baptize you today with a lot of hunger. With so much hunger. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> so he says. Uh, he says. Oh God you are my God. Honestly will I seek you my inner self thirsts for you my flesh longs and is faint for you hmm. in a dry and weary land where no water is verse 2 says verse 2 says to see this is why i'm hungry i'm hungry because i want to see thy power and i want to see thy glory in my life so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary the same way i've seen you in church the same way i've seen you in the bible is how i want to see you in my life 
The same thing I've seen with Jesus is what I want to see in my life. The experiences of Moses is what I want in my life. The experiences of Elijah is what I want in my life. I am hungry. I am not comfortable where I am. I want to become like Jesus. I want to become like David. I want to become like Joshua. So David says, this is why I'm hungry. Because I want to see change in my life. I want to see your power. And I want to see your glory. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm hungry for you, Jesus. Oh, say, I'm hungry for greatness. <laughs> yeah. So it is what you want to see that determines what you seek. It is what you want to see that determines what you seek. If you're okay with where you are, then there is no need of seeking anything more. Nobody will tell you what to seek when you are hungry. It is your hunger that will decide your pursuit. It is your hunger that will decide which school you will go. It is your hunger that will decide which business you will do. Your hunger. May God create hunger in you today in Jesus' name. Number three, something to note about hunger. Hunger creates the sense of urgency. Hunger creates the sense of urgency. There are people who are always lazy, who are always slow. They are slow in everything. Everything. They have plans, but they don't, they don't have the urgency. The urgency to fulfill them. They have goals, but they don't have the urgency to fulfill them. They have visions, but they don't have the urgency to fulfill them. Why? Because they are not hungry. When you are hungry, your hunger will create urgency. There are so many people who die with books. There are so many people who die with, their, with songs. Songs in their hearts. Books they were supposed to write. They never wrote them. Some of them wrote them but they never published. Some of them wrote songs but they never produced. Why? Because they were not hungry enough. They are hungry but they are not hungry enough. They have a vision but they don't have hunger. That's why there is no sense of urgency. When you, have, when you are hungry, nothing else matters. When you are hungry, everything that you do is towards filling your stomach. Meeting that hunger. Nothing else matters when you are hungry. When a man is hungry, nothing else will make sense. Nothing else will make sense. So if you approach life with this kind of attitude, with this hungry attitude, this hungry attitude, nothing will ever be able to stop you. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will stop you. You cannot stop a hungry person. When a hungry person sees food there, you cannot stop him. He will go for that food. When you are so hungry, you don't care about what people are saying. All you care about is where to get food. How to fill your stomach. I pray that God will give you that kind of hunger. The hunger that will create urgency in your life. Hallelujah. So that you can be able to fulfill your destiny. You cannot fulfill your destiny without urgency. Without that kind of hunger that creates urgency. Because many people have dreams. Many people have visions that never come to pass. That never become reality. It is time for your destiny. To become a reality. 
It is time for your vision to become a reality. It is time for your dreams to become a reality. And the vehicle that will take you there is the vehicle of hunger. Somebody say, I'm hungry. Oh, say, my father, my God. Give me hunger. Create hunger in me. Yes. When you are hungry, everything becomes an urgent matter. Your life becomes a priority. Your vision becomes a priority. Everything you do is towards getting to your priority. That's why when people are young, some people when they are young, they are not in a hurry. They are not in a hurry. Because they have not developed hunger. They are still okay. They are still okay. Everything is working well in their lives. Until they hit 40. And now they look back and nothing is there to show. And that is when they become hungry. And that is when they get this sense of urgency. And now they are running everywhere. They all of a sudden become serious with their lives. You don't have to wait until you are 40. Become hungry now that you are 20. Be hungry now that you are 30. And if you are 40, don't be discouraged. You can still achieve your, your dreams even when you are old. Amen. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will go for my vision. Say, I will go for my destiny. <laughs> Look at Mark chapter 10. Nothing can stop you when you are hungry. Nothing. Nobody can stop you when you are hungry. The devil cannot stop you when you are hungry. The reason some people are discouraged so easily, it is because they are not hungry. They say they love God, but they are not hungry. They are not really hungry. Because people can say so many things. But you are, people will not judge you by what you say. People will judge you by what you do. People will not judge you by your ambitions. People will judge you by your vision. Because vision has to do with what you are doing. Ambition has to do with what you aspire. Ambition has to do with what you imagine could happen. <laughs> but vision has to do with what you are doing. If it is indeed a vision, then you will go for it. Then you will begin to work towards it. But if it's just a desire, you can wait until you are ready and until you are when you are maybe older. So nobody can stop you when you are hungry. When you are hungry. Give us verse 46. Verse 46. It's the story of um, Bartimaeus. The blind Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus. The son of Timaeus. Sat by the highway. By the highway side, begging. The man was begging, but he had come to a point where he was tired of begging. He was tired of people ridiculing him. He was tired of people laughing at him. He was tired of people mistreating him. And so he got tired. And then verse 47 says, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The man had become tired. The man suddenly became hungry to see. So that he can depend. He could depend on himself. Verse 48 says. And many charged him that 
he should not hold he should hold his peace so many people rebuked him and told him keep quiet one of them being uh, Peter of course but he cried the more a great deal look at that but he cried the more a great deal thou son of David have mercy on me he didn't want to know. He didn't want to care who was stopping him. People tried to stop him, but he was not ready to be stopped. He said, no, you cannot stop me. You are stopping me. Are you ready to give me your eyes? Will you give me your eyes? You are telling me to keep quiet. Will you give me your house to live in? Are you telling me to keep quiet? Will, will you give me your car to drive? I cannot keep quiet. I cannot stop praying. Somebody say, I will not stop. Oh, lift up your hand and say, I will not stop. I will pursue my destiny. I will travel for my destiny. How can you stop? How can you allow people to stop you? How can you allow people to stop you from coming to church when they cannot bless you, when they cannot help you, when they cannot take care of your children, when they cannot take care of your destiny? Nobody is praying for you if you are not praying. So we cannot be stopped. We cannot be stopped. We must be like Bartimaeus who told Peter, I will not keep quiet. You, you, you may be the chief usher. You may be the chief protocol. You may be the, the bishop. But I will not keep quiet. I need my miracle and I want it today. I want God to touch me and I want him to touch me today. I will not keep quiet. That is why nobody can stop the church. Because we are hungry for God. When you are hungry for God, nobody will stop you. Nobody will stop you from going to your business. Nobody will stop you from praying. Somebody say, I refuse to be stopped. Say from today, no devil will stop me. From today, no man will stop me. Yes, how can you be stopped? How can you be stopped? Refuse to be stopped. So hunger creates the sense of urgency. For Bartimaeus, it was urgent. He needed to see. And he needed to see there, there, and then. He needed to see there, and then. It was a matter of urgency. It was a matter of urgency. Do you want to see God? Do you want God to touch your life? When do you want God to touch your life? Do you want promotion? When do you want God to promote you? It depends with your hunger. How many people are hungry here for promotion? How many people are hungry for God? It depends with your hunger. When we say let us pray here, you will see by the way people pray. Some people will not be praying. Some people will be looking at others. Like they are being paid to look at other people. Huh? They are not praying. They are not hungry. They are okay. Their lives are okay. They want to continue in mediocrity. They want to continue in, in poverty. Hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. When you are hungry, you will not care. At the time you are ikifika, you are, you continue pushing because you want your blessing and you want it today. Yes. The programmer may not know what you are going through. So why should they stop you? You continue praying. You continue asking God what you want. Continue asking God to touch your life. Somebody say I will be hungry. Ah. Say again hunger. Number four. Something to note about hunger. Hunger destroys the spirit of laziness. You cannot be lazy. You cannot be hungry and be lazy. You cannot be hungry. You cannot be hungry and, la and be lazy. The only remedy for laziness is hunger. The only cure for laziness is not motivation speech. The only cure for laziness is hunger. Wait until you are hungry. Maybe you still have some money in your pocket. Wait until you don't have any money in your account. That time you will not need any motivator. 
you will not need a preacher you will not need anybody to remind you that you need to fast that day you will begin to fast that day when uh, when the landlord is on your neck you will fast you will pray and fast you will pray and fast So you don't have to wait for that day. Become hungry and look at your life and see what is not working and be irritated. A hungry man is an angry man. If your hunger has not brought you to a place of anger, you are not really hungry. If your hunger has not brought you to a place where now you are angry, then you are not hungry. Maybe you need some exposure. You need to continue going deeper into the realms of wilderness and hunger so that you can become angry. Somebody say, I am angry. Say, I am hungry and angry. Oh. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 3. A hungry man cannot be, cannot be lazy. A hungry man knows no limitation. A hungry man can do anything just to get something to fill his stomach. If you are hungry, it will not matter what you don't have. These guys were lepers. The four lepers. They were full of sores. They were full of wounds. They were bleeding. They were in pain. Some of them did not even have finger, 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 or whatever, fingers and toes on their legs. They didn't have them because of leprosy. But they were hungry. They were hungry. They needed to see change. They were smelling death. They were smelling the, the spirit of death. And they needed to, to change that. They didn't want to die. They didn't want to continue staying there. And so they said, verse 3, they say, why should we sit here until we die? And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why should we sit here? Why sit we here until we die? We cannot sit and wait. We cannot be lazy. Why should we be lazy until we die? Somebody say, I refuse to be lazy. Yeah. You must refuse to be lazy. You must refuse to be lazy. Number five. Glory to God. Hunger makes you, hunger makes life interesting. Hunger makes life interesting. Hunger makes life interesting. Hunger makes life interesting. Life is very interesting when you are hungry. But when you are not hungry, ah, nothing makes sense. When you lose your appetite, life becomes useless. When you lose your appetite, appetite is the first sign. It is the main sign of health. Somebody that is healthy will desire to eat. But if you are not healthy, excuse me, if you are not healthy, one of the signs, one of the signs that you are not healthy is lack of, is the lack of appetite. The lack of appetite. When you are not healthy, Food doesn't make any sense. When you are not healthy, when you are not interested in this life, hmm? just know that something has attacked your health, either spiritual health or even physical health. Something has attacked your health. When you begin to feel like you are not interested in life, you just want to die, then know that you are under attack. Something is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. 
Why do you want to commit suicide? Because you've been attacked. The rest of us, we don't want to die. Actually, heaven is the only place where everybody wants to go late. Everybody wants to go to state house. Now, now, now. Everybody wants to go to, U to the UK. Now, now, now. Everybody wants to go to Dubai. Now, now, now. Everybody wants to go to the US. Now, now, now. But ask how many people want to go to heaven now. Nobody. Even the bishop. Heaven is the only place people want to go late. So, nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to die. If you are, if now, if all of a sudden you want to die, something is wrong. Something is wrong with you. You have lost appetite. The reason you have lost appetite, it is because you've been attacked. You've been attacked. You are not yourself. Ask your neighbor for me. Do you want to die? <laughs> okay, you can rephrase the question. Ask them, do you want to go to heaven now? <laughs> Even the most righteous, they don't want to go to heaven. So when you lose appetite, something is very wrong. Something is very wrong. So you need to maintain your appetite. You need to pray so that your appetite can remain. You need to maintain your appetite. Hunger makes life interesting. Hunger makes your life interesting. When hunger is not there, you are not interested in anything in this life. Look at Proverbs 27 verse 7. Give us from good news. Proverbs 27 verse 7 This is what the Bible says I want you to pay attention to this scripture Because it's very very important Very very important Look at what it says Let us read together When you are full You will refuse honey Pause there When you are okay When you are full And they bring honey You don't want it You will refuse it Hallelujah. When you have no problems, when you have no needs, and they tell you there is, an, uh, there is an opportunity somewhere you can apply for a job, you are not interested. Why? Because you are okay. You have paid your house rent. But when you have not paid your house rent, and you hear there is an opportunity to work somewhere, hey, you don't even ask how much. Because you are hungry. Guza mtu mwambie hunger. Mwambie I prophesy hunger. The reason you are not interested in God. It is because you don't need him. Right now everything is okay. Your body is working well. You are breathing in and out very well, okay, properly. Everything is okay. Wait until you have cancer. That is the time that you will be seeking God with everything that you have. Am I talking to somebody here? Wait until there is a case in court that is threatening to take everything that belongs to you. That is when you will go to fast. That is when you will be asking pastor. Pastor, when are we going to fast? Because you want people to help you fasting. And if you want to bring your, your prayer points to the pastor. That is when you go to pastor and you tell pastor. Pastor, nowadays in our church it's like we are not fasting. We are not fasting the way we should. Because you want him to declare fasting. And fast for you. When you are okay, when you are full, when your stomach is full, you, you are not interested in honey. <laughs> Wait. Wait until you are hungry. <laughs> Look at the following, uh, the following words. He says, but when you are hungry, even bitter food tastes how? 
even Githeri becomes sweet. <laughs> when you are hungry, you will look for Githeri. But when there is pizza in the house, you don't need Githeri. You cannot eat Githeri. Is that not true? Yeah. So the reason why you, you select, select jobs, you don't want this job. You want a better job. It is because you have no problems. It is because you are okay. There are no problems in your life. Wait until you hit 40. And you have children to take to college. That time you will not choose any work. Any work is work. Money will be money that time. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say hunger. Yes. Yes. Hunger makes life interesting. To succeed in this life, you must refuse to become uninterested. When you find yourself uninterested, the enemy is attacking your progress. So whenever you are not interested in the things of God, it is because the enemy has started to attack you. He's attacking your progress. He doesn't want you to arrive to your destiny. He doesn't want you to get to where he ordained for you. He ordained you for. So he wants you to continue living in the, in the average life, in mediocre, in mediocrity. Okay? He wants you to continue in the mediocre level. Hey, somebody say, I refuse to remain in the mediocre level. Say, I refuse to become a mediocre. Say, I refuse poverty. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Number five. The last one for now. Hunger activates your creativity. When you are hungry, you become creative. The reason why you say there are no jobs it is because you have no problems you can still eat you can still you know you have a house your mother is paying your for your house mm -hmm. your father is taking care of you and your needs that's why you are not interested that's why you say there is no jobs there are no jobs there are no jobs if you were hungry enough you would find a job for yourself you would find something to do if you were hungry enough. Hunger activates your creativity. Hunger creates innovation. Hunger makes you become an, become inno, an innovator. Hunger makes you become a creative person. The reason you are not creative it is because there is no hunger. You are okay. Everything is okay in your life. Look at Matthew chapter 9. People that are okay, people that are comfortable are not creative. People that are comfortable are not creative. Wait until you are pressed by everything. You are pressed by, by house rent. You are pressed by school fees. You are pressed by, by everything in your life. Then you will become very creative. That time your eyes will open and you will be able to see opportunities everywhere. Yes. When you come to church, you will see an opportunity to do business. When you enter Matatu, you will see an opportunity to make money. Because you are hungry. Because you are pressed. But when you are not pressed, when you are okay, when everything is okay, you don't see opportunities. When I talk about going back to school, you are wondering now, going back to school to do what? But when you are pressed by everything you've tried doing, everything is not working, that is the time now you begin to think, if I went to school, if I went to school and I got myself a diploma, I, I would get a job. I would get, it would be easy for me to get a job. That's the time you begin to, to think, if I went to, prayer, to a prayer mountain and prayed for seven days, I would unlock some some doors in the spiritual realm. I would get a job. My life would become better. Hunger. Somebody say hunger. 
And, and he entered into a ship. Uh, let me see which verse we are supposed to read. Verse 20. Verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. I want you to know that before, nobody has had ever, nobody had ever done what this woman did. Nobody had went to Jesus and touched the, the clothes of Jesus to get healed. So how did she know that if I touch the hem of the clothes of Jesus, I will get healed? Go to verse 21. How did she know? She had stayed for 12 years bleeding every day. She, she was in a problem. She was in trouble. She was desperate. She needed a miracle. She was ready to do anything to get herself out of that situation. She was handicapped for 12 years. She was handicapped. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment. Nobody told her. She said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall behold. Nobody taught her. Nobody preached to her. She was not in a seminar where they told her that if you can only touch the hem of Jesus, you can be healed. This one, she got it from inside of her. She educated herself. She became innovative. She became creative. Because she was in a problem. Because she was in trouble. Because she was hungry. She was desperate. Are you desperate enough? The reason why your eyes cannot see. The reason why you are still blind. It is because you have not come to a place of hunger. You have not come to a place of desperation. Had you been desperate enough. There are so many opportunities to make your life better. There are so many opportunities to, for you to become great. I pray that your eyes will open now. I pray that God by his spirit will open your eyes. For you to see how to come out of your situation. This woman never went to any seminar. To be taught how to become healed. That was, a, that was a condition that she could not even go to her pastor. And tell her pastor what was going on. Because every day she was discharging blood. Every day she was, she was in pain. Every day she was in shame. She was always thinking and smelling. She could not stay near people. She could not go to the pastor. She could not go to Jesus and explain herself. But because of her desperation, she needed to see the hand of God. She needed the hand of God to touch her instantly. All of a sudden, she got a revelation. I pray that God will give you a revelation to come out of your trouble.